Oh, Father God, we come to you this afternoon and give you thanks and praise for the life that you have left to us. We thank you, oh God, for our mother, our grandmother, great grandmother, sister, a friend, a loved one, Lord and neighbor, those, oh God, the one that we would have been with for a number of years, those that we would have loved and adored, and who would have loved and adored us. And even as we mourn her passing, God, we ask that you will come, that you will extend your mercy to those who are more feeling the pain of that loss. Those who are grieving, may they not grieve like those without hope, but may they look to the only one who can give them that hope, the Lord Jesus Christ. May they commit everything into this hand and allow him to work things out as only he can. God, we ask that you will undercurrent them as they go through the days and the weeks and the months and then even the years. And that each day will be easier to bear than the day before. As they look to you, God, as they seek your guidance, as they find strength, as they find rest in you, Lord, will you be there for them as you have promised? Let them know, dear God, that they have not been forgotten at any time, but that whenever they are called, you are present, you are here. So be with them, God, today and the days ahead as they go through this time of pain, this time of grief that only you can know exactly how they feel. And Father, we ask that you will continue to guide and you will continue to direct them through this period of the time from from here on. And even as we go through this service and we remember our loved ones, may we think of our own mortality and know that one day we too will pass the way of Sister Millicent. And may we make our calling and election sure that we will know that we can see her again in glory. Lord, we commit this service into your hands and we ask that whatever is said and done here will bring honor and glory and praise to your name. So we give you thanks even now for all that you have done and all that you will do. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Please remain standing for the singing of the first hymn, Precious Lord, Take My Hand. Just Lord, take my
Bible study for the first scripture reading. It's taken from Proverbs 4, verses 1 to 13, and is read like by the young degree. of a father and attain to no understanding. For I gave you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also and said unto me, Let thy heart retain my words, keep my commandments, and live. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. And she shall bring thee to the sorry, and she shall bring thee to honor. Bend thou thus, embrace her. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. Hear, O my son, and receive my saying, and the years of thy life shall be many. I have taught thy, thee in the way of the wisdom, I have led thee in right paths. When thou, thou, when thou goest, thy steps shall be strengthened, and when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Take fast hold of instruction, let her not go, keep her, for she is thy life. Thank you. We now have to remain stand a little bit longer as we sing the second hymn. Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for him who died on Calvary, for him at Calvary. Years I spent in vanity and pride, my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me he died on Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free, pardon there was multiplied to me.
series that you've been starting for a while. As we ask you to join us as we read the words of Psalm 23. And we all read together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff. They comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Even though we go through the valley of the shadow of death, we have that assurance that God is with us and he will take us through even the worst of our situations. So this evening we can give him thanks and praise for the life of Sister Millicent, even as we mourn her loss. The second scripture reading is taken from Psalm 31, verses 1 to 5, and is read by Sherry Ann Paris. Shall we stand again for the word of God? Psalm 31. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. Bow. Okay. Psalm 31. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Psalm 31, in thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. Bow down thine ear to me. Deliver me speedily. Be thou my strong rock, for an house of defense, to save me. For thou art my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. Pull me out of the net that they have laid freely for me. For Thou art my strength. Into thine hand I commit my spirit. Thou hast redeemed me, O Lord of truth. Thank you. And this time we are going to have the eulogy read by Stephen Griffith. You may be seated. Good afternoon, friends and family. Medicine 
Avro Graves, Sunrise, March 15, 1928, Sunset, October 5, 2021, Celebrating Grand's Life, October 29, 2021. On March 15, 1928, Clarissa Graves gave birth to a bouncing baby girl who was given the name Millicent Graves. She would become one of eight sisters with whom she shared a bond by no other. Cause whom if one fought anywhere before making it to the house, all would have to join in and share blows on blows, or deal, or deal with, Cla with, Cla with Clara, as they all affectionately called their mother when they all got home. Gwen will later become a mother of her own to three children to whom she loved and adored unconditionally, Ivadni, Michael, and Eunice. In her youthful days, Grant started to work at BMC in Cheapside, but somehow gravitated to the, to open, uh, to the open lot next door, which would later became, become the Cheapside Fish Market. This is where she would spend most of her days scaling, fit, bo scaling boning, and selling fish. By this time, the market was now in full development, and she was placed in stall two. Beside her was her first granddaughter, Wanda, with whom she would later share many fond memories of the market, and also some of her closest friends, Olga, Elaine, Ayon, Carmen, and Shortman. Gran, by then, had many loyal customers, whom would love and cherish her and will now know her by her most common name, Avril. At the market, working at the market brought Granny many joys. Not a day went by that she was not scaling and burning almost up to 1,000 or more fish a day. And most nights, bringing her work home with her, with her to package off and wait pick up for the next day for her most treasured customers, we knew exactly where she lived. As the years rolled by, Gran had four more granddaughters, were added to the family, Nicole, Antonia, Michelle, and Sherianne, whom she shared many summers and weekends together. And don't for one minute think she ain't let them get their hands dirty with her and her youngest daughter, Eunice, outside in the yard, scaling and boning that fish. Who was too young to handle a knife was there to help wash or package the fish. Listen, even over home, as her younger sister, the late Yvonne Graves' house was called We still call it this day, to this day. Her nieces were summoned to come across to help. Even at one point, calling one of them by name, Marlin, the fish dead already? You can kill the fish again? Although Grant had five granddaughters, the Lord probably thought, no, this is not enough. I'm best her with three great grands, two girls and one boy. Leandra, Aluko, and Shiana. Summer, vaca summer vacation was the house, the house, no, the house was filled with noise, sometimes crying and laughter, for Grant took the line of spare the rod, spoil the child. Literally. If we got too naughty or got in trouble, it was a belt or anything she would put in her, put in her hands on to connect hit to you are her most famous means of punishment. Let us leave a hint. I can pinch you on your ears hard, hard, hard. Grand's threat for all her grands, as she would call us 
was KFC 4. She dares not put a nut to her mouth, although Eunice, or Mami, as she affectionately called her youngest daughter, would make sure we ate, had our tea, and was put to bed before Gran came home. But when Gran came through the door, no matter how late the hour, the hour first thing, she would ask, Mommy, the children eat? Knowing very well we had ate, she would wake us all up one by one and get that KFC. As the years went on, and the granddaughters and the great grands grew up, and grand would begin, would, would be again blessed with a new member of the household, a great great grandson, Jaden. He was adored by Grand and could do no wrong in her eyes. If his mother came home from work and made a fuss with him, Grand would say, In this house was quiet till you come home. I could not hear a pet, a peep out of him all day till you get home. For some reason, that rod was always spared when it came to Jaden. But her, pray, but, but her praying for him and placing God's blessing over him was not, was not. Gran was always a strong and firm believer in God. Not a Sunday would go by before her attending church, even after she, would, she could not go as often We hear Ev this morning singing, so we know she good. Many mornings, Grand would make sure her day started by calling each and every one of her church sister, friends, and her sister Eudora to make sure they were good or to have a prayer session. God forbid if they did not answer the phone on their end as soon as it rang. Gran would, have, Gran would have us call consistently if it took a whole week for her to hear that person and or just to put her mind at ease. Gran lived a long and prosperous life and provided for us, making sure none of us was left behind. She will always be a treasure gem in the household and we shall miss her tremendously, especially telling us May God go with you as soon as we leave for work or school. And how she prayed for each one of us and never letting us forget to give God the glory, not only on good days, but on bad days. Gran was not only a grandmother to seven, but a grandmother, sister, and friend to many who loved and adored her from the, Ch from the Clapham community. The next door neighbors, children, and grandchildren. The sisters and brothers she met at the Abundant Life Assembly Church. The many friends and customers she had in Cheapside Fish Market. And last but not least, her cherished sister, Eudora. Her children, grands, great grands, nieces, and nephews and cousins. Grand, you left an empty space in our home and brought many hearts. The day the Lord called you home, but we know you have taken that eternal residence next to God's majestic throne. And we know he welcomed you into his kingdom with wide open arms. But we ask one thing of you. Please don't stop praying for, us, for all of us like you always did. May your soul rise in God's eternal glory. Rise in all his glory. We love you always and forever, Eunice, Michael, Wanda, Nicole, Antonia, Leandra, Sheena, and Jaden. May God go with you, Grand, and may, you, may your soul rest in eternal peace. Thank you. Amen. The woman who loved and was loved. Most of all, a woman who loves the Lord shall we stand as we sing the hymn at the cross. Oh. Uh -huh. 
last I did my Savior bleed and lead my sovereign die. Would he be put the sacred head for such a word as I? At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Was it sin for crimes that I have done? He grew upon the tree. Amazing pity. And the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. When light the sun in darkness hide and shut his glories in. When Christ the mighty for man, the creature's sin. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. But drops of grief can every day the dead of love I owe. Dear Lord, I give myself away with all that I can do. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Amen. We can be happy even in our times of loss. For at the cross where our Savior died, is where he brought our redemption. Please remain standing as Reverend Dr. Michael Holford comes to give the sermon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to all. Good afternoon to all. Once again, on behalf of the pastors and our families, our elders and their families, members and friends of the Abundant Life Assembly, we want to convey deepest condolences to the family, the friends of our dearly departed Sister Millicent Graves. I believe the the collage of photos in our funeral sheet this afternoon captures what many of us would have experienced in our interactions with Sister Millicent. Someone who was filled with joy and who expressed that joy in her beautiful smile. And today I know that as we grieve, the Lord will comfort all who are in need of his comfort. Not only today, but in the days to come. And our prayer is through every aspect of this service, 
that God will reveal himself to you as he did to Sister Millicent. Before we take our seats, I just want to read from the book of Job, chapter 19, verses 22 to 26. Job, chapter 19, verses 22 to 26. And it says, why do you persecute me as God does and are not satisfied with my flesh? Oh, that my words were written. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. That they were engraved on a rock with an iron pen and lead forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives. And he shall stand at last on the earth. And after my skin is destroyed, this I know, that in my flesh I shall see God. Father and God, we come to you this afternoon because you are the only one who can meet our need today. Some of us are in need of peace. Some of us are in need of comfort. Some of us are in need of healing. Some of us are in need of redemption. And this afternoon, Lord, we humbly come before you, asking you, O oh God, to meet us at our need. And Lord, we pray through the preaching of your word, that everyone who is in the hearing, both who are physically here and those who will watch or are watching, that, Lord, we would be ministered to by you. So we give you the praise and we give you the thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may take your seats. I will just spend the next few moments sharing from the word of the Lord. And if I could entitle this sermon, I would use the words of Job. For I know that my Redeemer lives. For I know that my Redeemer lives. The passage that was just read accurately captures the resolve of Job. Job was a follower and a servant of God who at this point, at the point which he made this declaration, for I know that my Redeemer lives. And for those of you who like the King James Version, for I know that my Redeemer liveth. He is in the midst of unimaginable suffering. And from his perspective, possibly death. What he is going through at this time, and for those of you who may not be aware, Job by this point has lost all of his children. And when I say lost, not that he, he went somewhere and he can't find them. They were all dead. Job, by this point of the story, had been afflicted with a severe disease. And unlike what we are able to do in this time where we could go to a doctor and we could get a diagnosis, we could even get maybe a prescription for some type of medication, Job did not know what this was he had. He did not have any remedy for it. He had no knowledge of where it came from. But here he was, suffering. And along with his suffering, he had some people around him who were giving him some bad advice. Some people around him who were making assumptions 
as to why he was going through this particular circumstance. I don't know if you may know people like that, but some people know people who make assumptions as to why they are going through a particular circumstance instead of giving sympathy and comfort in the time of need. But none of you know people like that. But there are people who know people who would jump to a conclusion as to why you are going through a particular circumstance. And for those of us who are aware of the story, we know that Satan himself went to God and requested to torment Job to see if he would give up on God. And the reality is, unless we have committed some known sin, there are times that we will go through circumstances which are hard, which are difficult, without the knowledge that it is something that God has allowed for his glory and his honor. We are not talking about what Satan asks for. We are talking about what God has allowed. Because Satan could ask, but if God does not permit, he cannot do it. Somebody should be saying amen. Thank you, the two of you. But Job had no clue what was going on. He had no clue why this was happening to him. He had no awareness of what the resolution would be. Oftentimes when we are not well and we go to a doctor or we get some type of medical advice, we are normally told, well, you have to go through this, this, length, of, of this length of medication or you have to be under care for a certain amount of time. You'll get over it in a week. You'll get over it in 12 days. You may have to go through three months of a particular procedure and then we will see how you are doing. But Job had no idea what the resolution would be. He did not have a clue. But he knew one thing. And one thing he could be sure of, that his Redeemer God lived. And that's not just a, a, an expression, that was not just a cliche for him. He was saying this from the perspective of, if my God lives, Whatever happens to me in this life, there will be a time to come where I will see my God face to face. The reality of challenges in this life is that the challenges of this life will eventually come to an end. It don't seem so to us, but in reality, in God's economy, in God's timeline, it will eventually come to an end. There's a particular circumstance that we are all going through together that we wish would come to an end. And if you're not sure about what I'm talking about, there's a piece of, of cloth or fabric over your face, over your mouth, over your nose because of this circumstance that we would all, I think, would like to end. Anybody would like it to end? I see some people with their hands down, like, you good, you good with the mask thing? All right. But we must understand that in the midst of this particular challenge, even in the midst of our mourning, God has an end to this situation. God has not lost control, even although we might feel that we are about to lose control. Job's confidence, Job's sanity was in the fact that his Redeemer lived and is still alive. But this particular thing that he says regarding seeing God, seeing his Redeemer, seeing his Redeemer in his flesh, reflected the fact that Job believed 
and had strong faith, not only that his Redeemer lived, but because his Redeemer lived, he would be raised from the dead. Because he talks about, he, 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 he says, um, my skin, after my skin is destroyed, this I know that in my flesh, so he's saying his skin is going to be destroyed, but then he's turning around and saying that in my flesh, I shall see God. My skin is going to be destroyed. My flesh is going to, 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 to fade away, but then I'll have it back and I will see God. He is talking about the resurrection. The resurrection of all believers, all followers, all servants of God on that day at the return of Jesus Christ when we will see him face to face. The Bible tells us those who have died in the Lord will rise first. Sister Millicent will rise first. So while we mourn, there is a confidence, there is a comfort in a God who lives. Because if he is not alive, there is no resurrection. Everything gone through the edits. It's like the end of a movie. The credits goes up and everything goes black. But for the believer, we are assured that when we pass from this life through whatever circumstance we pass from this life we shall live again and we shall see god face to face here's what jesus says i am the resurrection and the life he who believes in me though he may die he or she shall live you know, maybe, maybe because of the culture we presently live in, the idea of being raised from the dead is not something that brings immediate joy. And why I say that, I, 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 Pastor, you know what I'm talking about. M much so in our culture, we are seeing a lot of these movies and a lot of these video games that anybody who's raised from the dead is a zombie. Anybody who is raised from the dead is some scary individual, and we don't want to be that. But the truth is, only those, only those who are believers on Jesus Christ will be raised from the dead and will have a glorified body and will see him face to face. No zombies, but those who are resurrected in Christ Jesus. This is what Job looked forward to. This is what Sister Millicent looked forward to. This is what every person who has had faith on Christ Jesus alone can hope and will come into because of the promises of Jesus Christ. But it doesn't just come like that. And if there's anything that you should have gained or gleaned from sister millicent's life is that to be able to come into this promise of resurrection it requires faithfulness to god to come into this promise that god has made because he is faithful it requires us to be devoted to god once upon a time words like devoted and committed and faithful were good words you remember when those were good words when people used to like to be committed when they used to like to be faithful you remember that time back in the 80s or the 70s or somewhere so but nowadays the idea of being committed or faithful to anybody or anything seems to be a bad word Worse yet, being faithful to an invisible God. Because Elder Roderick, sometimes we have a hard time being faithful to people that we can see. Worse yet, trying to be faithful, committed, devoted to someone you cannot see. But the truth is, the one we cannot see is more faithful than the ones we can see. 
His promises are greater than the ones we can feel. His, we are more assured that he will stand by his word than anyone we will ever interact with. But only, the only way we can come into the promises of God is through faithfulness to him. He is faithful to us. The Bible says even when we are unfaithful. So in Job chapter 1 verse 1. It describes Job in this way. There was a man in the land of us whose name was Job. And that man was blameless and upright. And one who feared God and shunned evil. Blameless and upright. One who feared God and shunned evil. Brothers and sisters, family and friends, this description of, of Job is not something you just wake up and do on any given day. It is only through the strength of Almighty God can you be described as blameless and upright. Does it mean that Job never had any temptations? Of course he had temptations. Jesus himself was tempted. All, all of us will face temptation. But it is who we will trust and who we will turn to in the face of temptation that will decide whether we are blameless and upright. Our respect for God, our fear for God to do what his word has said and to shun evil. To shun evil. What does it mean to shun evil? It means when you see something that is bad, not good, evil, wicked, that you go the other direction. Once again, I know our culture says, if you see something sweet, head for it. But God shows us and gives us the strength.
Amen. We ask, Lord God, that even as they would lay this body into the ground in a few moments, Lord, even though their hearts are breaking, they will continue, O oh God, to cry out to you. In their anguish, God, they will give you all the glory and all the honor that, like Job, they can say, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. But we know that our Redeemer lives. Lord, we know where Sister Millicent is this afternoon. And we give you thanks for the life that she has lived. Lord, that we can have that assurance that she is in good hands. And Father, even as they go through this time, may they too commit their lives to you that they can see her again in glory. So Lord, we just put everything in your hands and we ask that you, who know what is best for us, will take control and you will guide and you will direct even as we go through the times of grief, the times of mourning. So we give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. May the congregation please stand as we sing the final hymn in this part of the service. And can it be?
this evening. Lord, you said, come trust in you, come believe in you. And we come knowing, oh God, that you will do what you have promised. That you will comfort, you will guide, you will protect. God, you will encourage the hearts that are in heaven. And Father, we thank you for your word. That even as Job went through his affliction, God, we too have to go through ours. And may we learn from that lesson that even as we suffer our pain, our discomfort, even as we go through times of mourning and times of grief, times of persecution and confusion, may we learn, oh God, to trust in you, to put our hope in you, for you are our hope. As we leave this place and we go to the final resting place for Sister Melissa, we ask, Father, for your divine guidance, for your journey in mercy, that you will be with us, God, on the road, that you will keep us from harm, from dangers. And even as we lay his, her body in the ground, that you will continue to be with us, God, in the days and the weeks and the months ahead. So, Father, we just want to thank you for all that was said and done here this afternoon, for the lives that were touched and challenged and changed, those who have committed them to you, God. May you strengthen them in you. May you keep them, God, from going back, that they too, God, will have that assurance that Sister Millicent had. And Father, in everything that we do, may you be glorified. We give you thanks and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Even as the casket is wheeled out, we ask that you will remain in your place until the casket is free. And as we go, we will go to the singing of the hymn, My, Rede My Redeemer Lips.
Anything to anything to be laid on before Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Nicole, all family members are here. All family members are here, right? Right. Yeah. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, even as we have come to this place of burial, this place of committal, Lord, we ask for your strength and we ask for your comfort. For those who mourn, for those who grieve, for those who contemplate, O oh God, we ask, O oh God, that you would reveal yourself to them in this moment to the honor and glory of your name. So, Lord, we give you the thanks, we give you the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. For as much as it has pleased Almighty God to take out of this world, the soul of our dearly departed Millicent Graves. We therefore commit her body to the ground. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, looking for that blessed hope when the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord wherefore comfort one another with these words The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him. Who is the health of my countenance and my God? God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be there. I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. Neither the flame kindle upon you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior.
For we know the house of this tabernacle is all built with God, and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For we are always confident, knowing that while we are home in the body, from the confident, I say, and rather. Thank you. 
And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came to the great tribulation, have washed their robes, and, had, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall their thirst any more. Neither, neither the sunlight. Is in the midst of the throne. Shall and shall lead them unto fountains of water. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. of
not so, I would have told you. I go to a place for so I prepare for you. Also. Him. We you are who can we know the way? But by me, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor nor death. From the love of God is in Christ Jesus our Lord.
All right. Um, um, yeah, she was very close to her. Shall we pray? Well, Father and God, we can go no farther with Millicent. As we have committed her body to the grave, Lord, we commend her spirit to you. We ask, God, that you will continue to guide and direct those of us who are left behind, those who mourn her loss this evening. That you will continue to strengthen, that you will continue to guide them. You will give them your peace and your comfort as they go through the coming days and weeks and months. 
Father, so you order all our steps in your way. And as we live our lives, God, we will live it to be a pleasing sacrifice to you. That might, like Millicent, when we have to leave this world, we will know where we are going. So we ask, God, that you will continue to be with us, even as we leave this place and we go to our home, to our various businesses, wherever we may go. May you guide us by your Holy Spirit and may you take us through the rest of this day and the week safely under your guidance in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Any, anyone wants to say anything on behalf of the family? No? May God's peace and strength be with each and every one of you. I know it is a difficult time, but we will continue to keep the entire family circle in prayer. God bless you. Thank you.